Hey, welcome back. So it's currently April 7th, and Maryland is under a stay-at-home order until at least April 30th, obviously because of COVID-19. And I'm being good, and I'm not leaving the house. So what that means is T2 and the T-Max, the two scooters that I normally ride to keep my sanity, are basically just parked there. Um, I don't really use them for anything essential anyway. If I have to go out to get groceries, I'm not going to pile groceries onto either one of those anyhow. So they're not going anywhere. But I like to work on stuff. I like to make videos. So I'm not just going to sit here. And that means I need to find a project. I thought about the Tao Tao, which you can see over there behind me. But basically Project Tao Tao, if I bring that back, it's going to need a bunch of road tests. So that's out of the question. Luckily, I do happen to have a corner full of bikes none of which run, so they would make good projects to stay at home and work on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one out. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Pick a scooter from this row. If it's ugly, there you go. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. My psychic advised me to mod this one. This is a 2017 SSR Motorsports Laser 5 Sport. And I don't think there's actually a Sport in a regular model. I think they're all Sports. And to be honest with you, I don't think it really looks that sporty. But at any rate, that's what they call it. And I know normally I'm a scooter guy, and this is a moped, sort of. This originally had pedals that attached to this shaft going through the engine. And they could be used to pedal it like a bicycle or to start the engine. But apparently the original owner didn't like those and took them off. Luckily, the original owner didn't remove this sticker, which is full of useful information. Pay great attention to safety. Read user's manual carefully before ridding. I bought this thing in April of 2018, so it's been sitting here collecting dust for two years now. At the time, I was on Craigslist browsing for no reason, stumbled upon the ad for this, listed as a 2017, so only a model year old. They didn't say the mileage, but most people don't ride that much, so I figured it was probably pretty low miles. And they wanted $450 for it. It had a couple of pictures that were really poor quality, but in the pictures it looked like about brand new. Um, so I've wanted one of these for a long time or something similar to this for a long time, which I'll explain in a minute. So I couldn't pass it up. I offered the guy $300, partially hoping he would turn it down so I could move along and keep my money um, and not get myself into another project. But he snapped up that deal or that offer immediately. So I ended up going up there at night and the guy comes out and before he even says hi or anything, he just walks out the door and says, runs great, let me fire it up for you. Okay, so I fired it up, it did idle well, and he revved it up, and then he shut it down. And then he told me how he rides it everywhere, and the only reason he's selling it is because he's moving. Um, then he told me that he took the pedals off just because he didn't like them, he doesn't have them anymore. Um, I handed him the cash, and he said he didn't need to count my money, he trusts me, and I've never seen, talked to, or met this guy before in my life, and then he rushed into the house. So that wasn't necessarily very reassuring, but I loaded it up and carried it home happily because again, I had been looking for something like this for many years. I mentioned that I had wanted one of these for a very long time, and believe it or not, this is why. So this is a 49cc, four-stroke, fully automatic engine that drives the rear wheel by a chain. So rather than our scooters that typically have the swing arm kind of built into the engine where the CVT is, and there's a gearbox on the back, this actually has gearing, everything is inside of the engine, and then it just drives the rear wheel by a chain. The main reason that I wanted something with this engine platform 
is because they played a big part in getting me hooked on two wheels. So I actually started off on a 49cc two-stroke um, mid-bike, kind of like a pocket bike but just a little bit bigger. And I didn't even want to ride that, but a friend showed up to my house and had it in the back of his truck and said, hey, let's go check it out. And I was like, dude, I'm going to break that thing in half and it's got to be slow and it can't be any fun. But long story short, I ended up going out there. We took turns riding it and I had a blast on it. The next day I bought one myself. Then we started modifying the things and they were really slow. They started out at maybe 20 miles per hour and I think we got them up into the mid 30s or something like that um, eventually. But one day I found mid bikes that had these four stroke engines in them and I picked up 110 cc for myself and then the next thing you know all my friends buy them I've got a whole garage full of these little four stroke mid bikes with this style of engine and every time somebody gets off work on a Friday or Saturday night they want to come straight over to my house because we all want to go ride them around um, that ended up not working out too well three of us got pulled over one day by a sheriff who threatened us with all sorts of things that we want to know parts of. The list included things like impounding all of our bikes, giving us all tickets for riding without a motorcycle license, um, all fined for unregistered motor vehicles because they weren't legal on the roadways here, speeding, um, I can't even remember the whole list, but it was thousands and thousands of dollars worth of fines that he threatened us with, um, as well as impounding the bikes. And he told us if he ever saw us again, he would be in the system and he would make sure that we didn't get off with a warning the next time. So we actually did take them home and we didn't take them on the streets anymore. Uh, we did mess around a bit, like a friend and I put my 114cc pit bike engine or mid bike engine into a go-kart and we played around with that and uh, trying to drift it through the yard and taking it to parking lots and stuff like that. But for the most part, that's when I actually moved on to scooters. Um, so initially, that's why I wanted something with that style of engine. Um, but again, I couldn't find it at the time and I ended up getting a two-stroke scooter my very first Vento Triton and So the rest is history. That's actually these things really got me hooked into two-wheeled small engine motor vehicles Not long after getting it home. I decided to look it over a bit better The first thing I discovered was when I looked at the title closer I saw that even though it's a 2017 model it was actually registered to the previous owner in early 2016 so he'd actually rode it for about two years at that point and it had 9,390, I believe, kilometers on it or chinometers, whatever it actually reads, um, which if that's correct, it would be a little under 5,800 miles, I think it is, 5,400, um, something like that. But no big deal because I didn't really care about the engine, the tires, etc. I just basically wanted the frame of the platform in good shape. So then I started looking it over a little more and I found things just in ill repair. Like the uh, bolt here on the top of the front fork was just totally falling out. Um, who knows how long he actually rode it that way. And cracked plastics on the side of it. I found that one of the brake levers, um, the housing for that is cracked. Um, all sorts of issues like that, which none of them are a big deal themselves, but just a lot of different small things to fix. Also tires going flat, um, things like that. So then I decided to fire it up and it actually started up fine for me and it revved up fine. It wasn't until I tried to ride it through the yard that I found out probably why this guy was so eager to show me how well it idled and revved and then rush into the house. As you can see, it didn't do too well under load. It would try to die out on me shortly after I got into the gas, and the best I could do in the yard was about five to 10 miles per hour max. Maybe the carburetor's dirty or it's got old gas. So drain the old gas, clean the carburetor. I actually had to unseal the carburetor so I could do a few small adjustments to it, and that seemed to get me nowhere. Another common 
issue with four stroke engines is valve adjustment. So I checked that and the intake was at five thousandths of an inch and the exhaust was at seven thousandths of an inch. So those were pretty wide and I thought maybe there was some promise in adjusting them to a more proper spec. So I set them at two thousandths of an inch on the intake and, and three thousandths of an inch on the exhaust. That still didn't get me anywhere. Then I checked compression and it had over 170 psi of cranking compression. <laughs> Then I tried a leak down test and it passed that. I checked the voltages from the exciter and the pickup wires. Those both look fine. I tried putting a new spark plug in there. I checked to see how large of a gap it would jump and the spark would jump a large gap. I tried a different CDI that I happened to have around and none of that did any good either. By then I'd went through all the basics and beyond and at that point I was thinking I probably had a carburetor issue. My ultrasonic cleaner was down at the time so I couldn't run it through there and I didn't want to put the money into a new carburetor because I don't really care if this 49cc engine runs and whatever ends up in there probably won't use such a small carburetor. So I just kind of gave up on getting this engine running at that point. One thing that I could quickly remedy was this thing used to have a trunk on the back of it and the trunk was cracked and I really didn't like the cheap trunk anyway, so I took care of that. After that, I pushed it into the corner and it sat there till you just saw me drag it out. But I did decide at the time, if I could find good deals since I wasn't in any hurry, I would buy some parts when I had the cash and I could actually get a really good deal on something. I started thinking about exactly which engine I'd like to buy because I knew that that would be the biggest chunk of money that I'd spend on this thing most likely and if a deal came up I wanted to be ready to get it. So a little bit of history about these. This is basically a clone of old Honda engines like trail bikes and monkey bikes. Um, there's some differences and it's been so many years since I really worked on them much that I can't remember exactly which parts fit where um, but essentially that's where they came from. And you can get them anywhere. When I first got into them, you could basically get 49cc up to about 125cc versions of the engines. And in later years, it moved on to now over 125cc up to, I believe they go over 200cc for some of the engines um, are available. But a lot of that depends on how much money you're willing to spend because a 125cc costs a lot different money than a 190cc, for example. A um, little more info about these things. They also have different transmissions in them. You can get them with automatic, which is a lot like our scooters, where it's just twist and go. You twist the throttle and it goes. You don't have to do anything. It's an automatic clutch. Um, then there's a semi-automatic version, which means it has a shifter and you shift gears much like you would with a manual transmission, but you don't have to operate a clutch. So you put it down in neutral when you want to go, then you shift it up into first gear. Um, most of them are four speeds. Um, then there's a full manual, which is just like a typical motorcycle. You've got a clutch and a shifter, and you actually have to use the clutch to shift. These commonly have four gears, but you can get them in different shift patterns. You can get more of the traditional motorcycle shift pattern, which is like a one down and three up or some of them are four down or four up and there are even some that will go around in a circle so you go neutral one two three four then it goes back to neutral one two three four which can be kind of strange but you have different options there and as far as automatic semi-automatic and manual basically the more control you have over it the more power that they put to the ground or they lose the least power with a full manual semi-automatic in the middle and the automatic loses the most power to the back wheel. So you'll get the most power out of having a manual transmission in one of them. So for that reason, I decided that I definitely wanted to get a full manual transmission. Another difference with these is that they come with electric start or without electric start. So this one is a bottom mount electric start. There's also a top mount electric start, pretty self-explanatory what the difference is. And then there are some with no electric start, so they're kick start only. Choosing displacement is limited by a couple of things for me. The first off is the bigger the motor, the more money it costs essentially. 
and I only have so much of a budget. I didn't want to put more than about $400 to $500 into a complete engine assembly. So that pretty much stuck me to about 140 cc engine. The second thing is the larger engines seem to have more reliability issues. I assume they're probably really pushing um, the bore and the stroke in there to where the cases are thin probably. I don't really know all the details about the big engines. There may be uh, different casings, a lot like you would have a GY6B or something like that, but I'm not really sure. Anyhow, when you start to get much over 125 cc, it seems like people talk negatively about the reliability and they even say that electric starters can't really be supported very well on the large engines. They just don't turn them over. And even kickstarting is known to crack the cases if you're not careful on some of the larger engines. So for that reason, I kind of figured I would go with a 140 cc. And then for the transmission, I actually wanted something. Obviously, I want the most power, so that's where a manual is. But I kind of wanted to set this up like a regular motorcycle, as close to it as I could get with the controls. So again, that goes to the manual transmission. And as far as electric start versus non-electric start, I didn't really care. I used to really want electric start, but then I got very used to my uh, two-stroke scooter with the overrange kit where I can't use electric start. And it hasn't bothered me kickstarting it regularly. So I don't really care about that one. So I basically decided that I'd get a 140cc full manual engine. If possible, I wanted the one down, three up. If not, I wasn't too worried about it. I just would rather not have the one that goes around in circles from first, second, third, fourth, back to neutral, first, second, third, fourth, etc. Um, so around June of 2018, eBay ran a 20% off promotion, good for up to $100 off of any item. So at that point, I found a 160cc engine on there and with the $100 off, that basically made it the same price as the 140. It still seemed like they could be a fairly reliable engine. You would definitely have to be careful kickstarting them so you don't crack the cases. Um, but it was available to manual with a 4-up transmission. This is a Piranha 160cc engine. And actually it has a 57mm stroke and a 60mm bore, so it should be 161.2 cc's. And they do make a 64 millimeter big bore kit for this, which would take it to 183.4 cc's. But given the reliability concerns that I have, I don't think that would be a good idea. So I don't really plan on taking it apart and doing any modifications before I put it in the scooter or the moped. This is an old engine that I took out of my cat eye mid bike. And it started out as a 72 cc engine, and then it was big bored to 88 cc. But the main reason I've got it up here next to the 160 is to show you the difference in the cylinder heads. So this is the more traditional style of cylinder head, what they all had back when I was into it originally. Um, I believe they're an E22 designation head is what most of them have. Um, and then this is what they're using now on some of these engines. This is a KLX 110 style head. So they've mated the Honda bottom end, etc with now a Kawasaki KLX 110 style cylinder head because they say that these heads uh, promote more horsepower than the traditional Honda style heads did. And to make it even weirder, they have different exhaust ports um, and some of these come with the KLX style exhaust port and some of them like this one still have the Honda style exhaust port which is supposed to make it easier to fit um, exhaust intended for a bike that had the Honda engine originally. One negative that I read about these online is that some of them come with a very poor charging system, a poor output, low output stator, and they can only support say 35 watts of lighting and charging. And then someone had posted, I believe, that they come in different configurations, some of which have two yellows, which is a full wave setup. Now I'm not sure if that's actually true or not, it's something I read a while ago, but this one has two yellows. Um, I'm just going to pop the three bolts out on this cover and take a look under here real quick to see what it actually has on there. It looks like I may not have to worry about finding a different stator for this at least because 
It's actually a pretty good sized stator, a lot of windings for a small diameter because they do go fairly deep here. Um, the stator's pretty wide or thick. And I checked with my multimeter as well as looked around and I get 1.2 ohms between the two yellow wires um, at the plug end there and I get no continuity with either one of the yellow wires and a ground. So I believe this is a full wave setup and I'm just going to have to make sure I have an appropriate regulator rectifier when I actually mount this in the scooter. In addition to what you've already seen, it came with a shift lever, a kickstart lever, some bolts and spacers and gaskets for the intake, and it came with an intake. I'm not really sure if I'm going to end up using this intake because I don't know how it will fit in the frame and work with the carburetor that I have because I did pick up a Makuni VM28 round slide carburetor. Um, there was a guy with a video online of this engine inside of the Piranha pit bike which Piranha actually makes entire pit bikes as well. And he used a Makuni VM28 carburetor on there and made a little over 14 horsepower to the rear wheel. Um, I also saw that these were pretty highly recommended online. And I like carburetors that have easy access to the main jet through the float bowl, which this one has. So I picked that up. When I had this thing running, I could see that the headlight was very yellow and very dim. So I did pick up a Wysomic 5 and 3 quarter inch LED headlight, the same thing that I used on one of my other scooters for a while. And I picked up the housing for that as well. I also don't really like the stock gauges on this or pretty much any Chinese bike that I've ever been on. And I got really lucky with that one. One of my friends came over one day and said that they were selling the business that he worked at and cleaning everything out of there that used to belong to the old boss. Apparently his old boss was into motocross stuff. So he's like, I got a gauge around, I brought it over. Um, it said motorcycle on it, we were gonna throw it out, but I thought, hey, maybe you'd use it. So I went to his car and pulled out a brand new Trailtech Vapor in the box. Um, I haven't looked it up to see which um, sensors it comes with or even taken it out of the box at this point, but got that totally for free, something they almost threw away. So at least I've got that to go on there. One thing that was obvious to me from the first time that I sat on this is that the shocks aren't stiff enough for someone of my weight. You can see they, uh, they can handle it. I've adjusted them as stiff as they go and I could probably get away with it, but I wanted to get something stiffer than this. I caught a 20% off sale at Treatland in 2019 and picked up a pair of these black, supposed to be heavy duty shocks. So hopefully they'll work a little bit better. There's sure to be a lot more that I need as I go along, but at least I've got a bit of a head start on the parts pile. That's going to wrap it up for this video. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that and click the bell to receive notifications so you don't miss the rest of this project and whatever else I get myself into. And please like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching.